lovelies. Today on Simply Loren, we're going to be reviewing these Smith Bats. Hooray! <laughs> about these pads is I got them in a size small. The sizing with these pads is very tricky. What I've noticed every time that I do wear these pads is that this part of the knee pad tends to roll over, which causes the already tight pad to squeeze even tighter than it was before. And that only happens at the top, I've noticed. I sometimes get that happening up here. I don't know if that's because I'm pushing on the outer edge of the sizing table, but like I said, they're kind of tight to me and they do leave a lot of imprints. I almost fell. <laughs> and they do leave a lot of imprints whenever I do take them off. That doesn't really hurt, but if you have sensitive skin, sometimes when you have clothes that imprint to you, like my knee pads will sometimes, they'll sting a little bit, but it goes away after a while. So when it comes to sizing, I recommend that if you're gonna get a Smith pad, and you're on the outer edge of the sizing table that you just go ahead and size up. It's the safest way to go. And if it's too tight, the cool thing about these is that they have Velcro on them as well. So you don't have to put your, your leg or your arm through the sleeve part. You can just do the Velcro part and you're good to go. Which like I said, if you get a higher size and you're on the outer edge, that's helpful because then you can just adjust how tight you want your Velcro. On Amazon, the sizing charts can be kind of confusing. I recommend going to planetrollerscape.com and um, using those to figure out what size is gonna be best for you or whether or not these pads are even gonna work for you at all. And since they do come in a pack, you have to pick one size for all parts of your body. So if you're a person, a person that is kind of disproportionate, your wrists don't necessarily match the size of your thighs or your elbows or whatever, you might want to consider getting a different kind of pad. But if you're okay with that and you can make the Velcro and be resourceful with whatever you got, these are a good way to go. I don't wear my wrist guards as often as I wear the other two pads just because it gets really hot where I'm at in Texas. It's like 92 degrees. That's why I usually don't have any clothes on when I'm skating and that's why I don't wear these that often. But um, when I do wear them, I try to make sure that I wear them on surfaces like the sidewalk where there's gonna be a lot of gravel on top of everything because that's where I'm more prone to fall. Yeah, I fell one or two times pretty badly and these came in clutch. I've heard a lot of different things about them. I don't wear them as much, so I don't have as many problems as some people do. But one problem that some people have with them is that this little piece for them moves around like this or it slips out. I've never had that be an issue, but I suppose if it is an issue for you, maybe you're grabbing on like this a lot and that's why it's causing that to happen. See, cause now I can pull it out since I'm grabbing onto it. And slipping it back in, I imagine it's not even gonna be that easy because this thing doesn't really wanna bend much, which is the point of having it as a wrist guard in the first place. Let me try to get it back in there now. <laughs> the struggle is real. Uh, oh, by the way, while I'm doing this, I broke my finger the other day. I'm not entirely sure it's broken because I refused to go to the doctor. And now my whole entire finger is bruised, as you can see here. Bam. <laughs> but yeah, so I won't be skating too hard for the next couple of weeks. So sorry if I'm not going to be able to go to the skate park like I wanted to. So that's just going to have to wait until this heals enough to where I know that if I fall down, I'm not going to die. Yeah. Anyway. Going back to the wrist pads, another cool thing about them is that they have three different straps that come off and on, like this. <laughs> this is cool because unlike with the other pads where they slide on and Velcro, you can just Velcro them on so you can put them on top of your clothes if you're wearing long sleeves. So, like I said, these pads do get really hot, but one positive thing I will say about them is that they protect you when you fall. So it's kind of like a trade-off. You're gonna have a little bit of tight uncomfortableness in the heat, for pretty good protection on the street. They slide a little bit when you do, actually, that was a really bad example because they didn't <laughs> slide at all. But sometimes they slide a little bit along the asphalt, but usually they stop you pretty good. But whenever you start feeling like, I feel like for me, the types of falls that I have are never too crazy because I'm 
careful when I'm skating and when I skate over things like gravel or water or whatever it is that I'm skating on top of, I try to make sure that I skate with my legs staggered, not this much, but like, like that much. That way if something does go wrong, I can just pop down to the ground. And that's the same thing you do like with hill bombing when you're going backwards or whatever it is that you're doing. It's good to just have a stance where you're ready to catch yourself if you do fall. All right, so if you're going super, super fast, and you need to break hands down like that. So you see I slid a little bit on these pads, but I didn't feel anything going down. Now I know I'm not going super speed right now, but that's just because I have an injury. But if I was going super fast, I trust these pads pretty well to protect me as far as like how hard I'm gonna hit the floor. I've definitely taken hits like this on the ground like this, and I I really appreciated the kind of support that Smith was giving me in that way. So it's a trade-off. You either you either want to be safe and protected or you want to be comfortable and not super hot and to be fair they do have lighter colors I decided to pick black it is what it is if you like that sometimes also I do want to say that most of the skating that I've been doing as I've been reviewing these pads has been on asphalt and or concrete from the sidewalk I skate outside a lot and I haven't skated a lot at the park yet but I will after my finger heals and I'll update you guys in that video when I do actually make it to the skate park I'll tell you how well these perform and I have been doing a lot of handstands and things with these on. I don't feel, I feel like it's a little weird, but it's not uncomfortable. It's definitely doable. It's just something you have to get used to. So if you're gonna go to the skate park, that should be, you should be mindful of that. And also mindful of the fact that the type of ground might not be exactly the same as what I'm skating on out here. The pads add about an inch to your knee, so that makes it a little bit more difficult when you are starting to do tricks where you cross your legs over back and through. It's fine, it doesn't bother me, it just, if anything might make it easier when you're not wearing knee pads. If you're not used to skating with pads on, switching to these because they add an inch to your knees and like a little bit of extra to your elbow, it's really great for protection, but it takes you a minute to get used to. So as far as like the fit and everything goes, that kind of depends on how well you size with the size chart. Honestly, it's really, it's kind of confusing to try and figure out your size, so I don't blame you if you're struggling. But like I said, if you're on the outer edge of the size chart, size up, and if you're in dead center, then keep it that way. It's, it's better that way. So for the fit, it's kind of just, it's iffy no matter what you do. For the uh, heat and being outside, it can get really hot. For the amount of protection you're getting for what you're paying, which is 45 bucks, I have not had a problem whatsoever with getting hurt with these pads on. They protect me pretty well. And as far as the slide goes, you slide a little, not too much. Depends on the surface that you're on, right? And but yeah, overall, it's a good first starter pad for sure. I've just been skating for the last couple of weeks. It's served me well. I don't know if you're going to be doing any kind of flips or anything, if these are the ways to go. But um, definitely make sure you do some more research as to what's going to work for you in your environment and how much money it is that you have to spend. If you don't have a lot to spend on knee pads or you can't afford to get something like these Smiths, go ahead and watch the video that I made last week about uh, creating your own knee pads out of socks. It's really important that you at least have some kind of protective gear and I know that not everybody can afford things that I can afford, but you know, try to save up because knee pads are kind of pretty essential if you're gonna be skating. There's a lot of gravel and sidewalk like bumps that you're gonna hit and you're gonna fall. And it's just better that you protect yourself. It's worth the money to protect yourself. But like I said, if you can't afford them, that's totally okay. I've been there, done that, saved up for these, and they've served me pretty well. So overall, that's pretty much everything I have to say about these knee pads. Thank you for watching. I hope this video was interesting. Here's some clips of me skating around in them so you can get an idea of how I skate and what kind of tricks I do and how they protect me. I hope this helped you. Sorry about all the cars passing throughout the whole video. I love you guys. Let me know if you have any questions or comments. Uh, leave them down below and love, Lauren.
I think this is a great spot when it's raining and I also think it's a great spot when you need to just try a different kind of surface than your typical asphalt. So, sorry if the camera's not sturdy. I actually am gonna try to practice hill bombing right now. Sorry. I'm gonna try to practice hill bombing. So as you can see this big hill behind me and I don't know whose car this is, but I'm gonna put my camera on it and hopefully they're not gonna get mad at me about that. But I'm gonna see if I can record it. Also, this is what I'm wearing today. Ta -ta. I'm hoping you're gonna be able to see me come down that hill. First time I'm home. As you're about to see. I've been wearing them for like a few hours now. I hope my audio is okay. I should probably check it. <sighs> okay, so my audio is fine. What I want to talk about is when I take these pads off, I want to notice, everyone to notice, that I do have these little indents in my arm, imprints from where the pads were put together tightly. Um, the pads stretch a little bit, but as you can see, everything's holding me super, super tight. Now that's better than having a pad that's flying everywhere, but if you're on the outer edge of the measurements, I recommend going just with the higher up size. You can always, you know, cut the Velcro and sew it. Anyway, so, like I was saying, let me sit for a second. Um, if you're gonna get these pads, what you wanna do is get a higher size if you're on the borderline size. And if you're in the middle, I guess just stick with it. Um, they get really hot and today it's in Texas, you can see me sweating. It's like 100 degrees and it's also super humid because it's about to rain, which is why I'm in the garage <laughs> um, skating. It's one of my favorite places to skate when the rain is happening. Um, I did skate outside today and I'm so sweaty. The sweat is getting into my eyes. <laughs> it burns. <laughs> um, but like I said, borderline size, go size up. If you're in the middle, stick with it. Um, maybe try and invest and see other types of pads if this pad doesn't work for you. I need to get my shirt because this is like sticking me so bad right now. I skate. Okay, I'm sorry about that. I skate two to four hours a day for those of you who ask me. I try to because it's just how I do my exercise and now that the gyms are closed because of quarantine, it's something that I like to do. Um, Whenever I get the chance, I try to do a warm up for about 30 minutes to an hour, and then from there, I'm just pulling all my tricks. I usually stay in one spot, so I'm working on getting a cameraman so the shots look a little bit more interesting. But I'm at the end of my skate today, and I wanted to just film on these pads. Okay, so just real quick, I wanted to do a little scenario as far as like a hill bombing goes and what that's going to look like for you landing on your pads. So we're going the same. done is I just loosen the velcro when it gets unbearable for me. Well, it's not unbearable. I don't want to be over dramatic, but I mean, if you're doing skating, you can probably take a hit, right? You can handle a little bit of an imprint, but anyway, these are my, my arms. <laughs> I really hope no one's listening to me, <laughs> but you guys, of course, obviously. So anyway, that's what I've learned with those. on the side. 
sidewalk, I never jump. Alright guys, that's pretty much all I have for today. I know this video was longer than normal, but I really wanted everything to be as informative as possible. So thanks so much for watching, and love, Loren.